Patrice, Renee, welcome to the It's Not That Deep podcast, bro. Appreciate it. Thank you so much. I'm happy to be here and get the get this conversation going. Yeah, man. I'm really excited. I was fired up when you hit me up because um, for those who don't know, your defensive back who's uh, recently uh, been drafted 21st overall by the Winnipeg Blue Bombers in the CFL. Congratulations on that, first of all, man. Um, and, and I know you got your sets, uh, your sights set on like even more, even bigger stuff. And we're definitely going to get into all that. But, you know, at one point you were even ranked number one player in Canada, which is, you know, from what I've seen, I've personally seen you play a few times, man. Like you're a nasty baller. So super <laughs> fired up to have you here, man. Um, and yeah, welcome to the show. Yes, sir. So you and I have actually a lot of overlap, as I was kind of talking to you before, uh, you know, coming up in Ottawa, playing football. You know, we both play Bengals. Uh, shout out to the Orleans Bengals. Uh, shout out to the Bengals, sir. You know that. Yes, sir. Um, we both played like here in Orleans, uh, which is a suburb in Ottawa. For those who don't know, uh, we actually played at like rival schools uh, right across the street from each other. You know, you went to St. Peter's Catholic School. I went to Sir Wilfrid Laurier. Uh, but I can't really call it much of a rivalry because y'all kicked our ass pretty much every time we play. I, I was about to say, like, uh, we ain't even <laughs> <about that>. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't want to bring it up, though, but I'm glad you know it. <laughs> hey, man, like, you, it, it is what it is, you know what I'm saying? But And, yeah. and on, on that note as well, you know, I never took football the way you did. You know, I stopped after high school, but I'm really glad to see how many people came out of this area. And, uh, you know, you also know, you know, a friend of mine and, and mentor, obviously, Coach Victor Tedondo. Shout out to Coach Vic and Gridiron yeah. Academy. Yes. Everything, everything that went down there, man. So I know we could just sit here and just talk about all the different football stuff. And I'm sure we're going to dive into everything. But I want to first hear from you, man. Talk to me about how your journey's been coming out of, of Ottawa, Canada, and now want to do bigger and better things. Yeah, man, like, honestly, like, it's been a crazy journey. And, I mean, it's still going, uh, you know, still in the mix of it. But uh, kind of coming, like, starting off back at the crib, like, back Ottawa, Ontario, like, for me, like, football was something, like, you know, I didn't really envision myself doing when I was, it was a little kid. Like, I was, I'm, I'm born in Haiti, moved to Canada when I was, like, two years old. Um, and, you know, all we knew was soccer at the crib. Like, all we did, my pops was a big soccer fan. We had the Brazil soccer team playing all the time. Like, you know, that's what we kind of did. And that was our thing. And then it wasn't until... You know, um, I lived in uh, Lower Town at the time, um, and, you know, we were uh, in the neighborhood just playing around, just being kids, like, fooling around all the time, like, on bikes, like, playing cops and robbers, whatever the case may be. Um, and one day, they just had football tryouts in the neighborhood, and uh, me and my boy was like, yo, we should try out. Like, he convinced me to try out. Went to my mom, convinced her to let me, uh, you know, sign up for it, and then uh, that's when I started my football journey, got the pads. I was about six years old, and then, you know, never looked back since, you know, fell in love with the game. Um, just being out there, being able to compete with my dogs and just being out there with the bro like with my brothers. Like for me, that was the most, most important thing. Like the game was always fun. Like it was something that I really enjoyed. Like it was something that I could, you know, um, fall back on, you know, stress free, just step on that field and just be myself and be with my friends and enjoy my time. Um, so I'm definitely um, once that happened for me, you know, and once I fell in love with the game, like that, that became my passion. That became my everything um, that, that that incorporated a lot of my time. Um, and, you know, and I just kept progressing through through it. And then, you know, we mentioned, we talked about Coach Vic and, and what he's doing. And he kind of, you know, in, in meeting him kind of changed my life forever. Like, I could honestly say that me and Coach Vic and, you know, having that relationship with him um, um, has allowed me to be where I am today. You know what I'm saying? Like, pretty much with him and his whole deal is um, he's a big football advocate. And, you know, he's a he's a, a big football fan and he wants to bring awareness and, um, you know, showcase the talent that we have in the city. And um, that, that's what he's all about, helping out kids, um, put them up and, you um, really helping them get to the next level. So he came up to me after one game. He was like, yo, like, I think you have a lot of talent. I think you're very, you have a bunch of potential um, and we could tap into it. As long as you're willing to put in the work, um, listen and, and follow my lead, um, we could do this. So I think I was about what, like seventh grade. Um, and I decided to commit to it. I was like, this is what I want to do. I want to play football for a living. I love this game so much. And if I get paid millions to, to, to do something I love, why not? Right. Not a lot of, get, not a lot of people get to say that. Not a lot of people have the opportunity to do so. So once I locked in with Vic, I was in the gym five days a week, like grinding, like when I'm telling you, we grinding. Um, and that's like every day, um, going yes, hard, 
um, like right after school, like it was times like people was going out for parties and stuff, but he'd be like, nah, like we gotta get this work in. We gotta go to the dome Saturday mornings and this and that. So um, he really taught me how to- Louis Riel dome days. I'll never forget Louis Riel, like, you know, <laughs> Louis Riel dome, like trying to sneak in sometimes, getting sessions. Like they wouldn't even let it out to the public. It was crazy. Like you had to get a pass. Sometimes we didn't even have no pass. But we try to find ways to go out there and uh, get that work in regardless. Um, so that's really what um, kind of started like the really actual work process of, okay, this is something that's going to be big. This is something that I could do. And this is something that could take to the next level. So big shout outs to Vic and all that. Um, and then following that, we started doing camps. Like that's when really I started making a name for myself was going out camps. So for us being contained, you asked about like, you know, that journey, like, I think we're definitely underdogs, um, not rightfully so. Like it's definitely, you know, a, a messed up concept, but um, the reality is people don't really are always count us, counting us out. Like ask Canadian athletes, ask Canadian football players more specifically, we're always counted out and we always have to have a chip on our shoulder. Yes. So what we did was every weekend, bro, we would pull up, uh, Vic would rent out a van, like a seven seater van. We'll pick six guys or five guys and it'd be Vic and his wife and five guys, or we'll have two, two other drivers, two other parent volunteer drivers. And we'll go to hit different camps in the state. So we would leave Friday, early Friday morning. I remember like we'd all meet up at the dome at 3 AM, then go out and hit the road and probably hit like different camps. So whether it's like Pennsylvania, New York, um, Jersey, Boston, North Carolina, like each and every camp we could go to, we just went and traveled and we'll go out those to these camps um, and perform. And everybody like, man, who are these kids? Like, who are these Canadian guys coming down south and balling out, showing out? Like, what's this about? And uh, that's kind of when we started uh, making a buzz for ourselves. And I got to definitely shout out the OGs, Michael O'Connor, Eli Anko. I know you're probably familiar with Eli, you know, all, all Audible product. Um, he went to St. Pete's as well. And there were kind of guys quitting sores, um, guys that were in front of me, Tyrone Pierre. Um, those guys that kind of like paved the way for us young guys at the time and showed us the ropes. Um, so really, once we hit, started hitting that camp circuit, making a bus for myself, there was like, oh, who's this Canadian kid? And then really going out there and uh, producing and balling. Um, I was able to kind of have a little bit of stature. And then uh, that's when I was about, what, in 10th grade, I had to make the decision of what I'm going to do, um, whether I'm going to stay in Canada and continue, finish my high school career or go to the States. Because like I said, all the coaches, they were like, yo, you're good, but how are you going to face against American competition? Like, yeah, exactly. In our game, like we obviously we have different rules up in Canada, different everything. So that was kind of the uh, the big big concern for them. So when I was in, what I think it was about what fifteen years old, I sat down with my parents, sat down with Vic. You're like, yo, all right, we have an idea. This is the goal. You're gonna to have to finish high school in the states in order to you know finish showcasing your talent and, and doing what you got to do. So that's when we shopped around and I ended up um, linking up with my high school coach, uh, Pano Valgaris. Um, big shout out to Coach Val Garrison, Episcopal High School. Um, it's a boarding school in Virginia, 100% boarding school, co-ed um, in Northern Virginia. Um, you know, very renowned, very prestigious, um, great school. And, you know, I had the opportunity to go over there and attend and, you know, go out and play and as well to get a great education. And that was something that was important for my parents to, to make sure I go somewhere that not only I could focus on my football, but I could still get a good education. And that wasn't the only thing. So, you know, school and football always had to work hand in hand um, to, to make that happen. So went to went to EHS uh, for two years, uh, was able to play, did, did everything I wanted to do, really prove myself as a player, um, prove myself as a as a guy, and um, uh, got a lot of accolades. You mentioned you know being uh, ranked number one player in the country, was number one, uh, seventh player in the state of Virginia. Uh, at one point, was number fourteen corner in the uh, in the country, and then uh, I had the chance from there, got a bunch of offers, scholarship offers. Um, and I had to make a decision where I was going to go. And you're being humble about that, that got a bunch. Like, like you got an insane amount of offers. Tell, tell the viewers how many actual offers you got uh, down the States. Um, by the end of it, when it's all said and done, I think I ended up finishing with over 40 offers, of 40 Division One offers. So um, I was wild, man. To, to get to that point, yeah. Uh, it was a lot of uh, uh, a lot of stress because, uh, you know, <laughs> hopefully you want to make sure you make the right decision and you go to the right school. Um, mm -hmm. You could have all these offers, but you can only pick one. So that's what I always say. Uh, to the guys and to the younger generation it doesn't really matter about offers like that 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 thing is it really doesn't matter because at the end of the day you can only go to one school so um and wherever you go just make the best of that opportunity um so you know once i finished high school um i was faced with the decision of committing and that's kind of was a crazy story in itself like because uh, obviously I, I don't know if you know i uh, originally committed to rutgers university uh coming out of high school that's where i really wanted to go um school in jersey my grandmother's from brooklyn um, so she's right around the area. It's not too far from home. It's a, you know, easy drive. Um, family could come through, fell in love with the campus atmosphere. Um, just really, really wanted to go there. Um, I thought I was going to set in stone. But unfortunately, with the football world, like people don't understand, 
the football world is crazy, man. Like anything yep. can change within a second. Coaches getting fired, coaches, you know, relocating, promoting. It's a business at the end of the day, man. It's a yeah, business. Literally, it's a business at the end of the day. So um, that's exactly what happened. That's exactly what I experienced. Um, I committed to go to a school, and unfortunately, there was a coaching uh, coaching change, and um, you know, that left me with having a, a open recruitment. Um, so once that happened, I was like, dang, like, what am I gonna do? Um, I thought I was going to go to Rutgers, but, you know, definitely they don't even have a coach right now. So I have to look at my other options. Like, what's the vibe? Um, and then that's when I was talking to different schools. I was talking to Ohio State mainly um, and a couple of different schools. So I thought I was going to go to Ohio State. But once again, like just to touch on how crazy the football world is, the coach at Ohio State ended up taking the Rutgers job. And I was oh, like, we had to pull up, yo, let's go do it, blah, blah. blah. And then and then he's like, nah, hold on, hold on, don't do anything. I'm about to actually end up taking the job. Um, he had a, a good opportunity to present itself. And, you know, with all things falling through, I just felt like, you know, uh, it just wasn't the right fit for me at the time. I ended up going to North Carolina. Uh, so shout out to the Tars. You see the jersey in the back. Um, you know, I'm at the crib right now in the basement. So um, definitely have the jersey up. But ended up going to UNC. Spent four years there. Had the time of my life. Um, really enjoyed it. And, uh, you know, was really blessed to, to have the opportunity to go there. And then fast forward after that, this past uh, year, COVID hit, right? And um, we had the opportunity. They gave us the, the season was all messed up. Everything was, you know, as you know, everything was all over the place. So they, yeah. they, uh, they allowed uh, the guys to have an extra year of eligibility. Um, and that would, uh, for me, it was like I graduated, right? So I finished my bachelor's degree um, and I had the opportunity to go to grad school for free, start on my master's, as well as, you know, boosting my stock up a little bit with the free year. So for us, uh, it was a no brainer. I was like, okay, I'm going to decide to come back to school for one more year um, and have that opportunity. Um, is a master's a one year like degree or is it two? So it's a two year degree for me, but you know how it works with scholarships. It's like, once you're in the program and you start, you always have the opportunity to come back and finish. Mm. So you can always have the opportunity to pursue your sport um, and whether that's professionally or whatever that may be. But once you're done with your sport, you'll always have the opportunity to come back to school and finish it with school. So now I'm starting my one year. I, I'm in my first year of my master's program. Um, I'm set to be done with at the end of the season uh, in December, and then I'll be able to come back. I plan on coming back, um, you know, later down the road. Um, so with the uh, new uh, COVID rules and the new opportunity, um, Rutgers, you know, they reached out and uh, presented themselves, and it was a great, great chance for me. I just felt like everything came back full circle, you know, like uh, or I was yeah. really committed there, and now I get the opportunity to come back and end my career there. Um, talking with Coach Shiano, um, he's he's a legend, great guy. Um, you know, I had a really good conversation. And he has a really good plan for me. So I ended up going at Rutgers. That's where I am today. So I know it was a lot of talking, but that's pretty much like a whole summary of, of the whole vibe of how, how I am and how I ended up where I am right now. Hey, man, I mean, you know, I know there's a lot to unpack there. you got an insane story and there's a lot of gaps to be filled there as well with, you know, the whole journey of it all. But now I really appreciate you kind of giving uh, the listeners like you know kind of the rundown of like where you wanted to go where you ended up going what's going on with the coaches and all this stuff but I want to kind of start back at like you know initially that decision to kind of break free from just you know being that Canadian athlete which is always just something that's kind of like like you kind of touched upon like a little look down on or just like not taking as seriously just because Canada's population or the you know CFL rules or like all, all the all the stigma almost around us like I feel like ballers here just not taken nearly as seriously uh and, and it's always like comparison to our, our neighbors down south right so you were 15 when you had to kind of sit down and realize like yo if I want to pursue this thing to the next level I gotta cut I gotta go down I gotta go down south to this elite prep school and do my thing down there what was that like decision making process what did it really look like um, and, and what ultimately made you be like, nah, man, you know what? I'd be wasting my time here in Canada. Yeah. So, I mean, just having that idea on us, like for me, I, I kind of like it a little bit because it's, a, I get, I get, I get to play with the chip on my shoulder. It's like motivation, like y'all doubt me or I'm about to prove y'all wrong. And I think that's a mentality that I take on, um, throughout a, with a lot of things that I do just, you know, gives you that little extra edge, that little extra motivation to just try to prove your doubt is wrong. So for me, it's like something like, okay. I'm about to show y'all that these Canadian guys, we could actually ball out. Like we do have a lot of talent. And for real, if you look at it, like the matter of fact is we got some dogs in the city, like especially in Ottawa specifically, like yeah, I mean, for sure. list of athletes, like we got some dogs that could go out there and perform and whatever. So um, that's kind of how I took it. And in turn, so when, when it came down to that decision of having to leave school, like I could have stayed in Canada, but I mean, at the end of the day, it is a business. We touched on it. Like I got to do what's best for me. I got to do what's, um, anything that's going to put me in the best position to succeed. And I was going down South. So, I knew like at the end of the day, this is where I want to go. This is what I have to do. The sacrifices that need to be made. 
and leaving home was one of the major sacrifices that I felt like had to be made um, to, to, in order to, you know, go out there and give, give, give myself a chance to, to be where I want to be. So um, it was just a lot of sitting down, praying, um, talking to my friends. Um, you know, I really didn't want to leave my friends like that. I'm a guy, I'm a type of guy, like, I love my family. I love my friends. You know, we're very close. Like, I'm a very loyal person in that sense that, like, like I just want to, you know, be with my people. And uh, when I had to realize that I had to leave that setting and go to a different setting, a, a completely, I'm talking not even a different city, I'm talking a whole different country, like a whole different culture. Yeah. Um, I was a little, you know, skeptical at first, but I knew it was necessary. And that's one thing, like, I always have my eye on the bigger picture. Like, I always have my eyes on the goal. Like, and in the, the day, there's a goal that I got to see. And that's what I, I got, uh, whatever I got to do to get it, that's what I'm going to do. Um, so pretty much once I realized that, you know, it was a smooth transition and being able to go down south. So um, going back on what you're talking about there, like with having a goal and stuff, like, obviously, you know, you always want to make it to the next level. But talk to people about what's really that, you know, when you were working with Coach Vic, when you were in your young, formidable years, just trying to get, you know, your head on straight and figure out, yo, what I want to do. And yo, I want to do football. Like, that's my passion. This is what I want to do. What was like the ultimate goal? What, what is that goal and what's carried through to today? Yeah, for me, that goal was to play football professionally, like to be a professional football player. Like, I wanted football not to just be something I did recreation. Like, I wanted, like, it to because it meant so much to me and you know it's like your dream job that was literally my dream yeah. job is to play football yeah, yeah. to get paid for it like it, it yeah. made no sense to me and like you know the, the thing that's crazy is like you're looking at the nfl you're like these dudes was really signing 100 dollars million contracts to play ball like Stupid. these yeah, dudes was wild. really signing like 90 million dollar contracts to play ball so i'm like mm -hmm. it's like i already love the game and i get the opportunity to do something that i love like it's insane so for me it was always to to do this profession, like to actually be a professional football player is what was my goal and my dream. And when I locked in with Vic, it was like understanding that. And it was like understanding what it took. And I think for me, what was great too, is I had a lot of good mentors in front of me. I had a lot of guys that, you know, have gone through the ropes and understood the actual sacrifice. Cause everybody could say, yo, like I want to do this and I want to do that, but you don't really understand what it really takes to, in order to achieve that goal, you know? And if you don't have the right people around you, the right, the right, the right, the right supporting cast to, you know, keep making sure you're on the straight line, making sure you're doing the right thing, like keeping you structured, um, you know, things could fall left and right. So for me, having, you know, a guy like Coach Vic, having my parents, having my friends, this making sure like understanding what I wanted and what my yeah. goal was and working hand in hand, it made things easier to just stay locked in and being able to keep grinding. Yeah, that's one of the unique things to me about football and why I fell in love with the sport so much as well is like, it's just, there's so much that goes into it. Like people think it's just like, oh, big ass dudes just running into each other and stuff. But like, first of all, it, it's like, in my opinion, like obviously there's a lot of great sports out there, but in my opinion, it's, it's the best out there because of the camaraderie and the brotherhood that you, you know, experience with people. And uh, th these are your brothers on the field, right? Sure. And th those practices and, and putting in all that work for a game day has so many parallels to life. And I'm learning that now in business. Like football made me the man I am today. I still carry that identity with me. You know what I mean? Like I see like doing a podcast, this is my game day. Like, you know what I mean? Like there's just so many things that carry with you. But my big point with that is, is like you need that support system or you're not. You, you're, no one has ever made it alone especially in this sport you need the right coaches you need a supportive uh, cast of you know family or guardians of people around you who are going to take care of you you need teammates that are going to like gas you when you're down you know and i know we're gonna we're gonna get into this next but like when you deal with injuries and like you start to question you know that that goal which you know as much as i know a lot of people have that goal but it can waver when reality hits you in the face right so that's kind of like one of the next things I wanted to talk to you about a little bit is how uh, how has like the identity of football like stayed with you and impacted you like as a man outside of football? Yeah, I mean, you said it the best. Like, I feel like football is one of the greatest teachers in life, period. Like, there's so many things that you learn, you know, through the game that you could definitely apply to your everyday life. Um, I think one of the main things is discipline. Um, is one of the main things that I carry on um, with the sport because you know with football, you know you can't cut you can't cut corners like you can't take shortcuts or else on the game no, on the game field it's gonna show up you gonna get exposed. So if you don't put the time in to prepare yourself, watch film. If you don't put the time into go in there and work out. If you don't put the time to 
to do what you have to do in order to be able to be able to go out there and perform, it's, it's going to show up. So I think discipline is one thing that really I take away and apply my everyday life. Like, for example, if you have workouts, you know, I know I have workouts at 6 a.m. I know I got to prepare myself to go to sleep early, do what I have to do um, in, in order to 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 be able to get ready for that workout and wake up. And now and you apply that to a job. You have you have work at 8 a.m. You can't go to a job work late. Like, you know what you have to do. And it's just easier for me because I know, all right, I'm used to doing it for workouts every day. I could just go apply, go to work every day. Like, it's the same parallel. You know that you have a job to do on the field. I got my brothers. I got uh, 10 of the guys on this field depending on me to do my job. If I don't do my job, it doesn't work. If I don't, you know, hold my end of the bargain, it doesn't work. You go to real life, you're in a setting, business setting. You know, you have meetings, you're in a team, you're in a company. You have a certain job to do. And if you're not doing your job at a certain, you know, at the highest level that you can, it's not going to work. You're going to get let go. You're going to get fired. So all these things are things that, you know, I could apply to my everyday life, like each and every day, like perseverance, toughness. You know, I have one day, like I'm not feeling too good. I still got to go to practice and grind it out. You know, um, I might have this one little injury or something like that. I can't let that affect me. You go to the real world. You're sick one day. You know, you can't have no sick days like that. Like mm-hmm. if you don't feel like going to work today or if you don't feel like doing something, you know, you got to do it. So all yeah. these parallels are like, you know, like, I think like you mentioned it, like with your podcast and what you're doing and all this, like that grind, that drive, it comes from the game. Like it comes from the sport. Cause you know, you could really just apply that stuff literally hand in hand. So um, being a football player and playing the game of football has definitely molded me and um, has become an identity that I use in my everyday life for sure. Mm-hmm. Man, that's the perfect answer, bro. Like, and you could just keep going on like the characteristics, like, like the perseverance, the tenacity, like a legit hustle and the sacrifice too. Like you're talking about those 6 a.m. Uh, you know, it's not just like pulling your ass out and like making it for 6 a.m. just for like an Instagram pic or something. It's like, no, man, I got to be there. I got to be ready and I got to be on point. So that means if I needed like eight, seven to eight hours of sleep, that means I had to be in bed by like nine. I had to wind down by like eight. That means I'm not going out to the club with my homies who want me fighting. That means... That means I can't be like messing around doing dumb shit. Like I got to be focused. I got a job to do and you actually have to treat it like that. So now I like, I really appreciate that perspective. And that's something that I think anyone listening, you know, whether you play football or not, whether you got some kind of sport, work, hobby, passion, whatever it is, like if you start to apply some of those um, characteristics into everything you do, you actually find, um, you find a flow with it. I don't know how to really describe it. It's like, yeah, you don't want to do it, but you got to do it because it's part of the bigger vision. Yeah, for sure. Like literally, like it's different. Like it is a flow. Like you, that's, a, I think that's the perfect word. Like I mean, it becomes second nature, you know? Mm-hmm. And then like, and I, one thing that you said, like, I really like, like that drive, like that hunger to get more, like that hunger to get better. Like, you know, when you ride and you see the results and you're like, ah, you make a play. It's like, damn, like you just want more like that, mm-hmm. that white satisfaction, like just the competitiveness. And I think that's one thing too, just like the competitive nature in the mm-hmm. game. And you apply to your everyday life, like you won't, you go get ahead of the average person that's, you know, just being an average person. Like you, we're not like, I think yeah. athletes always have that competitive edge that sets them apart yeah. from the rest of the world. That's why, like, you know, when you're looking for jobs, stuff like that, a lot of times they're looking for athletes or they're looking for people that are, you know, have that understanding of that, that motivation and mm-hmm. things like that. So you could definitely apply that, that hand in hand for sure. Like it's crazy. Exactly, man. I want to switch gears a little bit and talk about, um, you know, devastating ACL injury that, that you suffered. Um, how did that all go down? And, and you know, how did that affect your mental, man? Man, like, I'm not going to lie to you, bro. Like, that's one of the hardest moments in my life I've ever had to deal with. Like, it just, like, came out of nowhere and it hit me. So, really what happened. So, I came up after my junior year at UNC, had a really good year. Um, you know, put, really put myself on the map uh, after that season. Uh, you know, we didn't, you know, have that much success as a team. Unfortunately, um, we lost a couple games, but individually, it's just my best individual um, career, um, uh, not career, but my best individual season. And after that year, I was debating, you know, whether I should go, you know, take my shot in the draft early or just come back to school. And we had a new coach coming in, Coach Mac Brown, legendary coach, uh, won a national championship with Texas. Um, you know, he hadn't been coaching for a while. He was out of the coaching game for five years. So he was making this big comeback, like, legend i was like wow having the opportunity to be coached by coach brown um and coming back for my senior year and then obviously graduating that's one well, was my, one of my main goals coming out of high school just i need to get my degree i was like i'm gonna come back for my senior year so you know senior year comes around a lot of expectation expectations for me had a crazy junior year i um, ready to attack the senior season everything's going new coach everybody's hyped up second game of the season our first game our first home game um against university of miami hurricanes 
um, night game, sold out crowd. Everybody's going crazy, jumping, great atmosphere. At the end of the second quarter, boom, start playing. I get uh, make a tackle, get hit, boom, in my knee. Like it wasn't like a, I step or anything. I just got a, I just got a helmet in my knee. Boom, I get up. I'm like, whoa, something something's not really right. Like oh, something's wrong. I, I kept playing. I played one more play. Then I got off the field. Whatever. The uh, training staff comes up to me. He's like, okay, we're gonna uh, take a look at you. Blah blah blah. I'm like, nah, I'm fine. Like I'm good. They're like, nah, you're literally limping. Like you're not. Like you can't go out there. I'm like, all right, like, let's take a look at it. So they take me inside. I leave the game. Go inside. See the doctors. Doctor takes a look at my legs, starts feeling around, do his little eval, and he's like, "All right." He tells me, "You're done. Just go, go shower up. You're, you're good for the night." I'm like, "Whoa, like, what do you mean? Like, what's going on?" He's like, "We'll talk about it later. Um, just shower up and we'll talk." I'm like, "You're not gonna leave this room without telling me what's going on. Like, you're a yeah. doctor. We've been doing this for years. Like, let's be real with each other. Like, tell me what the word is." And that's when he looked at me and he's like, "I think you tore your ACL." And as soon as he ended up saying that, like, I remember I just blacked out. Like. I was like, what do you mean? Like, what is going on? Like once, and you know, as an athlete, like when you hear ACL, that's like one of the hardest injuries, like the worst, most feared injury an athlete could have. Like everybody, you know, you could have a sprained ankle, this and that, but once you hear ACL, that's one of the, you know, big, big, big mm -hmm. ones that you could have as an athlete. So I heard that, I remember I just blacked out, threw my helmet, was just in complete shock and just honestly just devastated. Senior year cut short, so much hype surrounding it. And um, for me, um, it happened to the point where uh, I was going like I didn't know what to do or what to feel. So a couple of days went bad, uh, went by after I got the news. Um, just realized what was really happening. Took time to just be to myself. I was honestly depressed. I was in a dark place. Like I didn't know what was like. I was just in a bad, bad place for the first you know couple of days. And then it wasn't until I had a conversation with my bat, with my, my dad, my pops. Um, you know, he called me um, and he was like just checking in on me. You know, everything like that. He's like, Yo, how you doing? I felt like, yeah, honestly, dad, like, I don't know what's going on, but I'm just, I'm just down right now. And he was like, Hey, you know, all you've done your whole life is work. Like all you know how to do is work. Uh, you've been with Vic for all these years. All you've done is grind. Like that's who you are. You a grinder. Like you just a dog and you grind. You can only look at this in two ways. You can either let that beat you and just, you know, end your life, end your career and whatever you had to do, or you're just going to attack the process, accept what happened and just get back on your feet. And after having that conversation with my pops, I was like, man, he right. Like, all right, it happened, but people recover from it. Like, it's not the end of the world. I could really do what I got to do and get back to where I need to be. So once I had that conversation and my, my mindset really switched, like I literally got up from that moment, started doing little rehab drills, exercises. Like from that point, I'm like flexing my leg, like doing little things that I could do to get right. Um, and then from that point on, it was just more so just, I became into just addicted to the grind, like addicted to the get back. That would be what it was for me. Just, I just became all my goals. Like, I didn't even think about the NFL. I didn't think about anything else. It's my hashtag, the yeah. <laughs> hashtag the return. Hashtag the return. I literally, like, literally the get back. Like it was just also yeah. a whole other vibe. Like mm -hmm. I just wanted to, to just get back on my feet. So my whole mindset changed. And, and thankfully enough with my support cast that I have, coaches at the time, my friends, my family, and most importantly, God, honestly, just relying on my faith. That was a big, a big moment where, um, a time period where I was able to fall back and rely on my faith and just talk to God a lot and gain a lot of strength from him and really be able to help me persevere through it. Um, so it was endless hours at the, at the rehab center, double sessions, doing whatever I had to do to get back right. Um, but it was definitely a tough time, a trying time, but I think I needed it. Um, I think, I mean, obviously, um, I believe, I'm a strong believer in everything happening for a reason. I believe that God, he's blessed me so much in my life. Like throughout my entire life, I've always like been blessed, always had, you know, a good life. I was like, why would I question him now? Like, why would this be the time where I'm going against him? Like, why would this, with yeah. everything that's been on in my life, I have no reason to doubt this man. Like, I have no reason to doubt everything that's happening in my life to this point. So having that mindset and just being able to accept it and we're just attacking it is what made it, you know, been, it been a little bit easier for me. That's, a, that's an incredible mindset, man. And as someone you know, personally, who has been injured pretty much my whole football career from like one dislocation to the like hundreds of them and having surgeries left and right, this, that, and the other thing. Um, and recently coming off a of torn Achilles, I just know how devastating it is on your mental health and really like the identity that you tie um, towards, you know, what you do, who you are and what like, you know, what it is like your almost your value is you know what i mean everything you start to question everything and you start to really like 
you got to really build back. And I really love how you put that, man. But, you know, it takes, it takes a lot to overcome that kind of adversity and come back stronger. But that's the thing. It's like you do come back stronger. And that's almost why you're throwing that test. And it makes you a better man, a better athlete. And actually, I find something that I would, if I was like a GM or something, I'd actually rather the guy who came back from an ACL and, and you know, is still putting up the same numbers than a guy who never had the ACL at all because, you know, that guy's probably never been tested or never had like any kind of real injury. And then yeah. the first thing that's going to happen in the big leagues is you get fucked up and you're done. Careers, you just, you wash up. So now you're ready. You actually got the DNA, like you already downloaded it you know what to do next time like knock on wood it doesn't happen again but next time some kind of adversity comes into your life you're like all right been there we're gonna build we're gonna come back yeah for sure like i think i think that's that's a well well said like and that's exactly how i look at it and at the end of the day like for me it really just made me gain a little bit a lot more appreciation for things like definitely a lot more appreciation for the game like my love of the game happened deeper because i know i know as an athlete you could relate like once something gets taken away from you you're not able to do it every day it's like damn like just watching my boys out there having so much fun. I'm like, I got to be sidelined. It's like, all right, like when I'm back, like I'm not going to take this thing for granted. Like I'm not going to take anything of that for granted. Like I'm really just going to cherish every moment. And, and I think that's, that was like really my outlook on it. And I mean, obviously like I've had my dark days, I had hard times. It's obviously not a, not a smooth, not a smooth road at all. I mean, it was a long nine months. Um, It was a lot of, you know, a lot of, you know, sad nights or whatever the case may be, but um, just then again, just falling again, just always seeing that bigger goal and, um, you know, trying to get back to what I was doing. That's really just tunnel vision. And uh, I think once you have that, um, you know, it helps out a lot. And, and look at it now, man, like, like you're talking about that full circle moment where now you have a chance to play where you originally wanted to play, which is a beautiful thing, man. And like, uh, you, you gotta, like you sometimes, like you actually just gotta put faith in, in the process in God and any, any kind of thing that you believe in that's, that's going to just take you through the next day. And I think that's something that, you know, it's not just sports where, where that's really like, uh, you know, prevalent and important. Like everyone, I mean, I think everyone in some way has been somehow affected during COVID. You know what I mean? That's something that like, you know, you could either go left, you could go right, but you know, if you have those conversations with yourself and wh whatever your belief system is that you can overcome that and come back stronger, man, you get rewarded in weird ways, man. And I've been seeing way too many of these weird coincidences where one door closes and I'm kind of bumped out. Maybe I lose a client. Maybe this happens. Maybe like, you know, stressed with this or that. And then like, you know, you just kind of trust the process. You keep putting your reps and doing what you got to do, whatever you can do. And then, yo, another door opens because that other door closed. Or like, you know, you get a way better client or you do this. It's like, it's not just football, man. And that's what I think is really important to, to you know, anyone listening who's maybe not even like not an athlete or anything like that. But it's like, yo, Things are going to go wrong. Things are not going to go your way, but you almost like you really do got to have faith that, um, you know, if you just keep putting the reps in, even when no one's looking, even when you don't want to, even when, you know, you suffered an injury or, or you lost your job or anything goes wrong, just just keep going, man. Yeah, I think like one thing, like one, one of my coaches that really like um, one thing he told me that really stuck to me and I try to take you know, with me my whole life is just the concept of just adversity, like not being oblivious to what's going on in life. Like adversity is gonna come. Like you can't live your life thinking and everything's gonna be beautiful, flowers smelling good. Like everything's gonna be sweet at all times. Like you gotta understand that life is hard. Like life is life. Like things can happen at any time. So if you understand that might have that mindset that adversity is gonna come, it's really what, important thing is how you react to it. That's the main thing. Like you could literally let it choke you out, let adversity choke you out and make you feel horrible and humble it, like and crush you, or you could attack it. And it, obviously, I'm not saying like it's easier said, um, easier said than done. But at the same time, I feel like if you do have that mindset and you understand that, hey, like I, everything might not go smooth, but you know what? Even if it doesn't go as I wanted to, I'm able to get back on my feet and get back to it. Like I'm stay the course, stay on the grind. I think you know that's my advice to to everybody that like, out there listening, regardless of what you're doing, is to understand that adversity is going to go there, um, going to be there, but really just really know that the important thing is how you rebound and how you react to it and what you do next is the important thing. 
That's bars, bro. How you react to adversity is way more important. I want to switch gears a little bit and dive into kind of some of your uh, your current training. Like, what are you doing now for training, nutrition, recovery, all that kind of thing, the whole package. What's it like a day in the life of a, of a pro athlete? Yeah, so right now, I mean, we're in the midst of it. Like, so right now I'm getting ready for training camp. Uh, we're actually report for training camp in two days. Um, that's, gonna, you know, definitely excited for that. Uh, but for us, it's really just grinding, like, every day working out. So start my day around 6 a.m. Um, we'll have early early lifts in the morning. Um, so we'll have, depending on whatever day it is, we're doing legs or upper body, whatever um, our strength coach has going on for us. And, you know, I got to give a big shout out to Coach Jay Butler, um, our strength coach over at Rutgers University. Like, he has been getting me right. Like, I think it's one of the, you know, best strength programs I've been around. And um, he's definitely developed my body um, to, you know, to, to a different level right now. And I'm feeling I'm in the best shape I've ever been in my life in terms of, you know, physical strength, mental strength. And he's been a big, big, big part of that. So definitely got to give a big shout out to Coach Jay over there, oh, down there at, at Rutgers. But really for us, it in, starts in the morning, um, depending on your lift time, usually 6 a.m., go out there, get a lift and a run. We'll always have a lift and a run. And then once I get my main core workout in, um, I do the, all the extracurricular stuff, which means, you know, going to see the trainers, work on my mobility, doing hip stuff. Um, I think that's one thing that's very important. Uh, I would advise to all the all the young guys, especially, you know, right now you think you're young, you think you're good, but get that mobility working, get your hips right, because it's going to catch up to you at some point. Like you're not going to be a young 15, 16 year old running around your whole life. Like make sure you take definite, definite attention to your flexibility and mobility. Um, so I do a lot of mobility work after my uh, initial um, workout. Um, and then after that, um, I'll try to get my catches in. Um, one of my coach, he always tells us you have to get a hundred catches at the touch of a football a hundred times a day. Like every day I get a hundred catches in, uh, make sure I'm staying sharp. Uh, after I get my catches in, I do some drills, some extra position drills, just in my craft. Um, not just, you know, lifting weights, but actual football specific stuff that I get into. Um, you know, whether that may be, you know, um, locking in one-on-one with my coach and just doing different type of drills that I do as a corner, um, every day, just making sure I'm sharp and, uh, I'm always on point. And then once I do get that done after that, um, I also do a lot of recovery therapy. So that may be, um, you know, massages. Um, you know, I get massaged twice a week. They, they, they take really good care of us down there too at Rutgers. That's one thing I will say, like Coach Seattle definitely puts an emphasis on the players and their bodies. Um, so mm -hmm. we'll have masseuse come in twice a week, maybe sometimes three, three times a week, get a 45 minute massage, um, you know, recovery tanks, ice tub, cold tubs. I make sure I try to get in there um, as much as I can, the hot tub nice. as well. Um, Norma Techs on the um I have these little moon boots I call them um, right. I'm looking at the Norma Tech moon boots you go in there and really massages your legs and gets you right um so I do a, I spend a whole chunk of my time doing recovery right. stuff so by that time I started at six go down the line eat obviously get good food um it's probably like around like what four or five at that point um and then I go watch film um with whether that's my coach or, or by myself I have an iPad with me that I carry around everywhere I go I have all my film in there um, able to watch any other team I want to watch or just myself, just make a shot and fine tune. And then um, I'll go in there and just chill for the, for, for the remainder of the day for a little bit, have my chill time, downtime, do whatever I want to do. And then before I go to sleep at night, just review my football notes, make a shot I'm on point with the playbook. Um, you know, if I have any questions, call up my coach, like, hey, we get, we did this. Um, just prepare myself for the next day, um, next meetings, make a shot I'm sharp. Um, in terms of nutrition, uh, we got the, uh, our nutritionist right now. My nutritionist, Dr. Pat. Um, his name is Dr. Pat uh, down there at Rutgers. He, He's the man, uh, you know, he checks my weight every day, make sure he has an idea of where I am in terms of my weight, making sure, you know, I'm not going too low or I'm not getting too high, um, steadily um, staying at, at the right at the right weight that I want to, um, you know, making sure he gives me the right food, whatever I need, um, you know, to feed me, whether, you know, I need more carbs or whatever calorie intake, like he takes care of all that, which really allows me to just worry about the main thing and that's ball. Um, I just go up to him and be like, hey, what we got on the menu today, what I need to eat, hand me whatever I need to eat and, you know, Make sure I'm straight. So that's kind of like amazing, man. Oh yeah, I never yeah. knew it was that involved. No, oh, nah, it's it's definitely like a like, whole new level. Like I'm not even. I mean, I can't lie. I don't know if it's like that everywhere, but I know for us specifically over there, like it's very, very well detailed. Um, you know, everybody has a job to do, and they really take attention to it and really proper what they're doing down there. So well, that's that's the way a lot of universities I feel like should be modeling it after because at the end of the day, and don't take this the wrong way, like like how I'm saying it, but like you're an asset. You, know yeah, I mean? really. you you are like the business. You are the, the, the piece of the, the puzzle that they need to get their ultimate goal as a mm -hmm. business. Yeah, right. Yeah. So so that that's a that's amazing, man. Appreciate you uh kind of outlining that because that that's the part of like being an athlete, like like some people might hear that and be like, man, that's not glamorous at all. Like that sounds like all day 
beyond a full-time job, you put an overtime into just being the best athlete that you can be. But to me, man, that sounds like the hype of shit ever. I love that. And, and to me, like everything you just outlined is my ideal life. Like th- those are still the things that I, I try to implement in my day. Obviously, I'm not doing it like an athlete anymore, but still, you know, I think everyone can borrow from that and, and realize that, yo, there's nothing like you got to put in time and mobility. I try to do 15 minutes every day of some kind of mobility. Even that to me is a lot to commit to sometimes. Yeah. But yo, like the nutrition, like just trying to be on point with the nutrition. I got a lot of work to do on that, but like meal prep service, you know what I mean? Go to the gym, go go for a walk, go for a run, do some kind of movement every day, all day. And then, you know, the studying for you, for me would be like, getting ready for a podcast like this, getting ready for some work with clients, get blah, 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 whatever it is. You know what I mean? But I I like to always relate it back to people who are not an athlete because I already know someone's listening to this thinking, ah, man, he's got it all easy. He's got it all taken care of. He's got the pros and everything. It's like, no, man, the only reason that's the case is so that he could be the best possible athlete that he could possibly be, right? Literally, I mean, you said it best. Like, we are assets. Like, at the end of the day, like, my body, I have to invest in my body. You hear LeBron James like all the time. Million. Our bodies are literally cars. Like you got to put, you know, for your car to run around, you have to take care of your car. Like if you don't take care of your car, you're not going anywhere. If I don't put the right food in my body, the right fuel in your car, you're not going to work. Like you can't, you know, there's certain things you got to do in order to perform. And that's just the understanding you have to have. And that's with anything in life. Like if you want the best results, you got to take care of whatever you need to take care of so you can have that result that you want. So that's really how I look at it. Like whatever I got to do to make sure that on Saturdays, I'm able to go out there and ball and do my thing. I'm definitely going to do it. And I think one thing that's also a big thing that I learned, I kind of just want to shout it out. Like, is like, we had touched on it, like sleep, bro. Like sleep is crazy. Like you, there's been studies and our coach, he's done, like he's had, we've had meetings with them where he had like um, actual doctors come in and explain to us like the importance of sleep. Like, like, for example, five hours compared to eight hours, your performance could change from 70%. Like, and that's with whatever you like, your just attention span, your reaction time, um, whatever you're doing, like sleep is a big, big thing. And one thing that we started doing is like wearing these sleep rings that we have that kind of monitors our sleep and helps us out. Like, you know, how much time of sleep we sleep, we have REM sleep, deep sleep. Yeah, the REM just, sleep. Yeah, the all deep. that good stuff. I got one of those like whoop watches and I track yeah, that shit as yeah, well. And it's like, really I, interesting. Like sleep, like that's one thing I'm definitely, you know, I wasn't really in tune with like at first, but now like I'm taking naps as much as I can, like making sure I'm getting the right amount of sleep because that's one of the most beneficial and natural performance enhancers and in that sleep. So definitely, definitely like suggest and tell whoever everybody You watching. beat me to it, bro. I literally had that note written down as you were saying it. I'm like, sleep is the number one performance enhancing drug in the world, man. Yeah, and, yeah, and, and, and not enough people are, are prioritizing it because it's hard, man. Let's be honest. Like trying to get to bed at a reasonable time is actually like if unless you actually built the habit and the routine of it, it's yeah. act it's not actually that an easy thing to do, especially in, in a social media world and like all these yeah. screens and all this blue light and all these things begging for your attention. Like I actually do struggle with this. Like I try to get to bed around ten o'clock, but I often end up around like you know midnight kind of thing. But if I got to be up for six. I just cheated myself out of a couple of good hours, proper hours of sleep that I noticed sleep. Like I noticed myself having more caffeine throughout the day, being a little bit more short fuse, a little bit more irritable, not as, and especially if I had alcohol, then my sleep is, is, is done. So yeah, literally. are you, are you, uh, do you partake in drinking at all? And how does that affect uh, your sleep and, and, you know, being a, a pro athlete and stuff? I mean, yeah, like for me, like it's definitely like a casual thing in terms of just big celebrations, like if there's an event or something like that, like, but um, I mean, as an athlete, like you literally can't, like, I, I can't like sit here and be like, I'm going to perform at the highest level if I'm out here drinking every night, you know what I'm saying? Like that just won't work. That just doesn't make any sense. And it never has to me. So um, whether it's like a rare occasion, if I'm celebrating something, if, you know, there's a birthday or we're celebrating some type of big event or whatever it is, I'll definitely, you know, enjoy myself or have a good time with the people that I love and do my thing. But in terms of that, like, I'm very cautious of what I put into my body. Um, just, just in terms of just wanting to perform the best, like that's just a competitive nature in me. Like I'm not gonna, you know, put whatever is as bad as in there. But um, yeah, for sure. I, yeah. I mean, I'm a definitely social guy. Like you know, I like to enjoy myself and have a good time. 
Um, but definitely got to be moderate and conscious about what we're doing and what you're putting in your body for sure. Yeah, man. I want to switch gears a little bit um, and talk a little bit more about the off the field stuff as well. Um, so obviously the NCAA, as you know, has changed their rules up on name image likeness. Um, and and I, I've noticed as well that you've signed on uh, to become a brand ambassador with, and I don't know if I'm pronouncing this right, but as a sportsman, SMX. Yeah, yeah, exactly. yeah. just like that, you say. So tell me, talk to me about what is what is sportsman? What, what is this all about? So for me, like sportsman, really what it is, um, it's like a marketing and branding um, agency that we have and that we started, me and my brother started together. Um, and it's really just giving the opportunity, like our main thing is looking at a local talent that we have here in the city, but more importantly in the country of Canada and just bring it into light, like giving athletes, uh, icons to uh, performers, you know, uh, entertainers, uh, you know, um, what do you call it? Creatives, you know, whatever it may be, just having the platform so they could really brand themselves and put themselves out there. A lot of the times people are going down South to go seek opportunities to, you know, sign with the big agencies to do this and that. Well, we could do it at home. Like we could be a homegrown company. Like that's really what we're at. We're a homegrown company really yeah. trying to exploit the talent of the country, the talent of the city. And like for me personally, how it worked out, like, so with the NIL stuff, finally, which is a big, 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 like major step in the college world. Huge. Like, very, very mon mon uh, monumental and a long time coming. Um, but in my specific situation right now, as being an international student and international athlete, I can't really, there's still, it's a new concept. So they're still trying to figure out the quick, the course and this or that of how it works. But I can't really, you know, be a worker in the States as a student right now, because I'm on a student visa. So when yeah. I had heard of that, you know, and listen to my boys, you know, sportsmen and what we had going on and behind the scenes, I was like, yo, like this would be a perfect opportunity for me to just do all that branding stuff at home. Like why not take care at home, have the Canadian market, get myself up. And, you know, that's pretty much what we did. And we came up with sportsmen and, you know, we spell it S P O R T S M X N. So S M X. Mm. And the idea behind that is just the inclusiveness. It's not just male athletes. It's not just, you know, mm. football. It's literally all inclusive to anything, anybody. Um, just, we want to go after and get work with the elites of the elites of the country of the city and just give them a platform. Once again, to just go out there and show the world who we are and what we're doing. And I think that we're doing something very special here. Um, with the company and i'm very excited a lot of great stuff coming ahead and it's going to be really really special man man congratulations on on starting that man i think you see uh what i see as well is is an incredible opportunity to show a spotlight on pro athletes elite athletes young athletes student athletes all types of athletes coming up who you know for one reason or the other just don't have the the ability the time or you know the belief in themselves to um look at themselves as a personal brand which you know coming back to the asset thing man we are all assets in in one way or another if you're working for someone if you're working for yourself as long as you're doing some kind of work and putting yourself out there it's not even just limited to the athletes but you know you are your brand and and whatever you put out there that's really important um, because, I mean, I could speak to you from personal experience, man, like just starting a podcast, like nothing, it's literally not that deep. Like it's not even that big of a deal. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like I just did that a couple of years way, like, ago, man. Before you go, like, I got to give you a quick shout out. Like I was just talking to the boys earlier, like it's not that deep. That is a great name. Like I, like, I rock with that. Like that's the most appreciate the you, man. I just to that before. I just had to shout you. <laughs> appreciate you, man. Appreciate you guys. But uh, to, to me, like what I was just saying there is like that alone has opened up so many doors and opportunities for me to even start my own media company and do kind of my own media marketing kind of work, you know, in our capacity as well. So I'm really excited for you to be able to get into this world and, and build out something as, you know, you're not just an athlete, you're, you're now you're not your boss, man. So yeah, really. that, that fires me up. I want to ask you a little bit more about sportsmen. I want to kind of dive into it a little bit. But what's your role in the company now as you're, you know, you're still busy, like, you know, you got probably pretty full plate. So what's your role with the company now? So, yeah, so for me, so I'm part of the um, original, you know, founders of the, the company with my guys. So it's five of us. Um, and uh, also the owner of the company. But for me, my main role right now is as brand ambassador and just right. being myself, um, really just representing the brand as much as I can and really worrying about the main thing. And by doing so, that's balling out and playing football and just living the sportsman lifestyle is really just going out there and just being the best that you could be at whatever you're doing, 
doing it at a high level, performing at a high level, and just taking it to the next step. And so that's really my role right now in the company is just really just being the face of the franchise in a way um, where I could show the world like, this is what we're doing here. This is how we're doing it. And this is how we go about doing things. And just being the best me that I could be, being the best version of myself, um, performing at the highest level that I could perform and just, you know, producing and just um, just showing the world that what really, th this is what the company is about. And this is, this is how we do it. Man, that's beautiful, man. Like just being able to be yourself and ball out and also in tandem build something. That's the, I mean, bro, that's, uh, like I told you, uh, you know, at the beginning of this podcast, like it's crazy the amount of parallels we got. We might not be, you know, in the same craft anymore, but to me, that's what the podcast, the brand, all this stuff is all about. Is like I want to document my journey for whatever it is I do. The podcast, I always wanted to be there as something that's like, you know, documenting me trying to become the best version of of who I am uh, and realize my potential. So I really appreciate like that you know, you're like, uh, I'm not like, you're, you're the brand ambassador, but like at the same time, the best thing that you could do for your role in that company is just keep being authentically yourself and yeah. keep balling out. So that's a beautiful thing, man. Um, so a lot of like young athletes look up to you. I had this question down here and, and what would you advise them when it, when it comes to like working with a company like Sportsman? Um, so what I would tell them is, just continue to being themselves and to just uh, focus in on the main thing. And I think that's one thing that we're doing as sportsmen is really great is we allow uh, who are clients or whoever we're working with to focus on the main thing and let us take care of the rest. So mm -hmm. if you're an athlete right now, young football player, go out there and put in the time. Like, don't worry about the marketing deals. Don't worry about people looking at you right now. Just go in there and grind and grind and ball out. And at the end of the day, just produce and be the best that you could be at what you're doing. And then we'll take care of the rest. Like we will come find you. We will come find us. So we will help you out, you know, put your name out there. Like, for example, right now, this podcast, like we, they, our team's been able to set this up for me out. You know, I didn't really like have to do much, like in terms of me personally, they doing it, like go behind the scenes, doing like our team is just taking care of all the extracurricular behind the scenes that allows the athlete, the entertainer, the, 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 whoever that person is, our client to just focus on their craft and let us handle the rest and let us keep branding you and putting you to higher levels. So for me, that advice would just be to not really focus on all the extracurricular, just to keep grinding on the main thing. And, um, you know, we'll, we'll make it happen. Um, and especially to the guys in the city, in the city of Ottawa, all the talent, we have eyes, man. We're looking, we're out there, we're searching up, we're, 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 we're noticing, you know, who the guys are, who girls are, whatever the case may be, and uh, just keep doing your thing. Man, that's that's amazing. Uh, just real quick on that though, like, uh, what what platforms is it on? Uh, like, uh, so we're we're everywhere. Like, you guys can follow us, you know, on uh, Twitter, uh, IG. Um, we know we're about to drop a TikTok page very shortly. Have some cool videos, cool contents on there. Uh, on Sportsman, uh, at Sportsman, uh, you know, S P O R T S M X N I N C. Uh, follow us all over there. You can follow me too as well, Patrice Renee underscore all those platforms. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, we're pretty much everywhere, man. We're gonna take this thing to the top. Um, really just, you know, want everybody to check us out, want everybody to read up on us and our story. And really one thing that's important, I think that'll surprise a lot of people is just the family atmosphere that we have in the company. Like it really started off as five best friends that were part, you know, of, of, of something and we're making it to, to, to higher heights. So uh, we really have a lot of authenticity in the group, a lot of, you know, um, camaraderie and just, just realness with us. Amazing, man. Um, I really love to hear this. I love anything to do with anyone kind of doing any kind of entrepreneurship and stuff just outside of just just one main thing. You know what I mean? I love the diversification. Um, I wanted to ask you, um, I had a question I wanted to ask you about getting ready for the NFL draft. So as some of the people probably listen to this probably heard that you got drafted to the CFL, which is Dope, congratulations. Mm -hmm. But something tells me you got your sights set on the next level. So talk to me about that, getting ready for uh, the NFL draft and, and you know, wh wh what you want to do with all that. Yeah, so real quick, like, I definitely want to give a big shout out to the Winnipeg Blue Bombers, man. Like, big, big, big shout out. Like, me being drafted 21st overall by the Winnipeg Blue Bombers, like, it, it, at the end of the day, it's still a dream come true because that's the opportunity for me to play, play the game that I love. For, well, that's your goal, so, right? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So that's definitely something I don't def I don't take that lightly. I'm very grateful for the opportunity and very, very appreciative to the to the organizations for believing in me and you know the um thinking that I deserve to be picked. So big, big, big shout outs to the blue bombers. But right now, um, we're in my path and where I've been going throughout my whole life, 
the NFL has been the destination. You know, that's that's the end goal for me. That's that's where I want to be at um, at the moment. That's 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 the the goal. So right now, just getting ready for the season. Like I said, about to enter camp in two days. Um, it's just really just showcasing my talent. Um, you know, having the extra games, uh, extra season. That's really what I came back for. It's just really just stamp myself. Like coming back for injury. Um, you know, last year was kind of crazy with the with the games. We had a lot of games get canceled. It was all mixed up. So I didn't really have the opportunity to have a full season under my belt recovering from injury. So now it's really the chance to showcase that I could play 12 games at the high level and just showcase my talent. And at the end of the day, like I'm a confident player. Like I know, like when I step on that field, I feel like I'm the best. I feel like I'm going to be the best each and every day. Like I'm a huge competitor and I'm a big believer in my abilities and what I'm able to do. So for me right now, getting ready is just to, to put that to the world, like to showcase the world, like, damn, this Patrice Renee kid is a dog. Like he's a baller. Um, and that's really what I'm sending out to do and just helping my team is win as many games as possible. You know, coming into a new new uh, conference, the Big Ten Conference, a very competitive com- conference, um, a lot, a lot, a lot of, um, you know, great teams, great, great assets, uh, try to help my team win as many games as possible and ultimately win the Big Ten Championship. And I think by doing those things, it'll set me up um, to kind of get to the next level and get where I want to be. And that's true. Uh, I got I got full confidence that you're going to get there, man. Um yeah, it's gonna, that's going to be dope, man. I'm, I'm really excited to see um, what this next couple of years has in store for you, um, you know, both inside and outside of the game, man. Uh, but, yo, man, this podcast has been absolutely amazing. I know I'm going to have you back on for sure, bro. Sure, um, back up. This, this is the first of many. Uh, it's going to be really dope to see your progression throughout your career, man. But I like to usually end off the podcast by asking kind of three uh, lightning round questions. Don't worry, you don't gotta answer them too uh, uh, too quickly. But yeah, just remember it's not that deep, so we like to have a little fun too. Um, so, question number one, I like to ask is, what's the worst advice that people are giving young ballers out there? Oh, the worst advice? Hmm. Hmm. That's a good question, actually. Um, that you got time. Hmm. Got time. A lot of people say like, ah, oh, it'll be okay. You got time. You'll be all right. You got time. Yeah, obviously you don't got time. Like time is of the essence. Like time is short. Like you'll you'll come quick to find out that things are gonna hit you fast. Like I remember just the other day, it felt like I was a freshman in college. Now I'm going into like you know my sixth year. Like it's crazy. So I think one yeah. thing that you know people people always you know think is like the season's three months away. Oh, I have time. Man, mm-hmm. I have time to keep doing my thing. Like oh, I don't need to go to the gym today. Like it's not that far. Like I think that's that's a big big misconception. A big mistake is think, thinking that you got time when you really don't. Like you got to be vigilant and, and and do things, you know, with a with a sense of urgency. It's a good answer, man. Uh, what's one thing that people don't know about Patrice? Ooh, uh, I'm fluent in three languages. Uh, I could tell that je parle français, parle creole, and I speak English. So shout outs to all my zoes out there. Shout outs to all my Haitian people, uh, my hey. French people out there. Uh, so I don't think a lot of people know that I'm definitely fluent in three languages. And yeah, yeah definitely want to. Man's out. trilingual, bro. Trilingual. Add that to the resume. Uh, <laughs> uh, third and the last question on the It's Not That Deep podcast, my brother, is um, what's your dream NFL team if you had to pick one? Uh, I, I know, I know it's putting you on the spot there, but you know the answer. Now you just got to decide if you're going to say it. Yeah, no, nah, I always say, you know, I, I, my favorite team is every team, all 32, whoever's down to draft me and believe in me. But um, to be Not honest, the answer, bro, you know, honest, you know, nah, to be honest, dude, I'm, I'm, I'm going to drop the, I'm going to give you the spice, man. Uh, since I was a little kid, I used to be a huge Cowboys fan. I am nice. still a Cowboys fan. I'm a big, big, big Dallas Cowboys fan. I've Ooh. been watching them since I was a little guy. You know, Des Bryant was a big fan of Des Bryant, Tony Romo. Um, you know, all those guys right there. Um, DeMarco Murray, when he was back there running the rock, um, you know, he's got Zeke right now. And also my boy, shout out to Navy G. Um, big shout yep. out to Navy Moore right there. Got drafted big by the out. Cowboys um, from the city of Ottawa. So they definitely show a lot of love to the Canadians. They actually had Eli Anku playing for them a little bit. Yep. They're definitely, definitely showing mad love to all the Canadians out there. So um, big Cowboys fan. And shout out to the Cowboys. We will come back this year. I know we've been disappointing in the low past couple of years, but we won't get it rolling right now. Dak going to get us right. Zeke will come back. Um, uh, we're going to be good. We got CD Lamb out there. It's going to be a good year for us. Well, let's hope this clip ages well, brother. I really appreciate you coming on the podcast today. Again, it's the first of many. Tell people where they, where they can find you. And I'm also going to have the links uh, in the description of this podcast as well. For sure. So y'all can find me on every platform, Twitter, um, IG, Facebook, at Patrice Renee underscore. And make sure y'all follow the company Sportsman 
um, S P O R T S M X N Inc. I N C on all platforms everywhere. Um, TikTok page coming soon, so y'all stay tuned for that. Make sure y'all hit up and run it up. And um, I appreciate you, Deepak, for having me on here, man. You're doing a great thing yourself in the city, just giving another platform for people to come out there and showcase themselves and pretty much doing the same thing. Like, I mean, big shout outs to you. Um, it's been a great time talking to you, man, and I can't wait to come back on you. Thank you, brother. Appreciate you and have a good one, man. All right, my boy. Everyone listening, just remember it's not that deep.